Many times in life, we think that the things, we, everyone thinks that the things that are happening in their life are bad. People get stuck in the moment. If something bad happened in life, no question, it's bad. At least to you, it's bad. To him, it's bad. To me, it's bad. Whatever is happening in your life, you're viewing it at that moment as bad. As long as you're viewing it only as bad, it means we still haven't learned this Mishnah completely. And the reason why is because Hashem says, I created the world and I judged the world with goodness. Meaning, we learn from Rabbi Akiva at the end of Masechet Brachot, everything that the merciful one does, everything that Hashem does, is always for the best. Meaning, there is no such thing as bad. There's no such thing as bad. Everything he does is the best possible thing that could ever happen. This throws our entire human logic in the garbage. Because first question you say, well, how is cancer bad? How is the Holocaust? How is, how is cancer good? How is the Holocaust good? How are the pogroms good? How is Bet Mikdash being destroyed good? How are all these bad things good? If everything that Hashem does is the best, meaning it has to be good in order for you to be best. So if everything He does is for the best, that means that everything is good. How could everything be good if it's so bad? How? Huh. This is where we have to start understanding our own limitations due to us being human beings. Meaning, we're never going to fully understand why Hashem does what He does. Never. Rambam says, to understand Him, I have to be Him. But we can understand being parents. Now, anyone that's a parent, they have a little kid. Would they ever tell their little kid, little seven, eight, nine, ten year old kid, honey, go do me a favor, pick up the car, bring it in the house? Like, pick it up over your head and bring it inside the house? No, right? Why? Unless the kid's an incredible Hulk. <laughs> they're not doing it. Why are they not going to do it? Because they know they can't. So, a parent that loves their child is not going to give them anything that they know they can't do. Why? Because they don't want to see their kid fail. Why? Because to see their kid fail breaks their heart. Because they love them. And they only want the best for their kid. Every normal parent wants the best for their child. So to see the child fail hurts the parent sometimes more than the child. To see the child go in the wrong direction more times than not, hurts the parent more than the child. And the reason why is because the child, while he's making mistakes, most of the times doesn't think it's a mistake. He doesn't think that smoking a little weed with his friends is a big deal. No, Ima, come on, relax. In your time, they didn't do it, but in my day, everybody does it. Look, they do it on TV. It's legal in California, in Connecticut, in Colorado, and pretty much all of America. Look, they even have a holiday for it. The kid doesn't think that smoking a little weed is bad. The kid doesn't think that having a girlfriend at 14 or 15 years old is bad. The kid doesn't think that having a kid at 16 is bad. Doesn't think so. He still lives with Ima and Abba, but his girlfriend just gave birth. He doesn't think it's bad that he still doesn't even know what earning a living is yet, but he already had a kid. He doesn't know how to be a kid, but now he's a father. He doesn't think it's bad with it, there's anything wrong with it, because it's cool. The mom, the dad that says, listen, I have some experience with it. I'm telling you, it's not a good idea for you. You're too young, you haven't matured yet, you're not ready to be a father. You're not ready to be a mother. You're not ready to handle the consequences of what happens when you do drugs. You're not ready to handle the consequences of what happens when the cops catch you. 
You're not ready to handle the consequences of what's going to happen to the future in 20 years when you still can't get a job for getting caught one time with a little bit of heroin. You still can't get a normal job. Why? Because you have to spend some time in jail. And unfortunately, the world today, they look at you based on your resume. Resume says jail, no one hires you. This is the reality. It's the reality of the world they live in. Not because they're against the people that went to jail. It's not because of that. It's because there's so many better options. There's so many people that didn't go to jail. There's so many people that didn't do drugs. Why would I pick the guy that went to jail? When I had a company, I looked at people's res their resumes, I had hundreds of resumes every day. And every day you have to look at resumes. It was like an employment company, even though it was an investment business. But you run a company, you have, you have to look at employees. So I would interview these kids, and I'd ask them questions. And by the way, 99% of all resumes are complete lies. The person and the resume are the same thing. They always say they know things that they don't know. They always say they like things they don't like. The, the only thing that's similar is the name. <laughs> so that's his life. Business owners know this is to be true. This is not uh, just an insult to people. It's well, not, It's true. It's what happens. People lie in their resumes because they are trying to portray themselves as better than what they are because they figure that whatever they are is not good enough to be hired. Fine. Whatever. It is what it is. But you look at these resumes. Now, if anyone says on their resume, I like to do drugs on the side. <laughs> I went, I spent three years in jail. I have a record. Anything like that. You stop looking at the resume, you crumble it up into a nice ball, you throw it into the basket, you hope that you make it into the basket, you go like this to everybody, say, ah, I got it. And you go to the next resume. Why? Because you have 99 other resumes of people that didn't go to jail and didn't do drugs and didn't have problems. It's not a, nothing against him. It's nothing to do with him. It's just there's so many better options. This is what boggles my mind sometimes when people make excuses of why they failed. Some people say it's because I was, I can't, I, I was brought up poor. Some people say it's because I'm black. Some people say because I'm Spanish. Some people say because I'm Jewish. Everyone has an excuse of why they're not succeeding. You're not succeeding because you're making too many mistakes. That's why you're not succeeding. If you let your color in the way, you're never gonna succeed because you let the color in the way, not because of anybody else. If Obama achieved anything in his life, was the fact that he showed you, you could achieve anything you want. Even if you don't know anything, you've never done anything, and you've never said anything right, you can still become President of the United States. <laughs> if he did anything right in his life, he could show you, without knowing anything, achieving anything, you could speak well, you could be President of the United States. So color didn't get in his way. If anything, he celebrated it. Color didn't get in the way of Jay-Z. Didn't get in the way of P. Diddy. Didn't get in the way of all these celebrities that have hundreds of millions of dollars and more money than they could count. Didn't get in their way. They used it to their advantage. But anyone that has a sad story to tell you will always have an excuse. Oh, I failed because I only had one parent. You know what? So did many of them. Oh, I failed because I was broke. Oh, yeah? Did you have $35 left to your name? I did. I still made $20 million. $35 left in my pocket. I had to use it to survive for the next month. After I ran out of money, I had to borrow a dollar every day for six months. Six months, I had to borrow a dollar from the kid Dimitri so I could eat and drink. I could eat donut and drink coffee. That was my food for the day. That didn't stop me from being a millionaire one day. The fact that I lost all of it later on in life has nothing to do with it. Point is, it didn't stop me. Oh, I'm an immigrant. I was too. Oh, I didn't finish college. I didn't initially either. Oh, it was hard. So was my job. I started my day at 5.30. It finished at 1.30. At some point, I slept because I couldn't, close, I couldn't open my eyes. 
oh this and oh that, everyone has excuses. Your excuses are the only thing getting in the way. It's not your color, it's not your religion, it's not anything. It's you. You're getting in your way. Hashem is telling you, while you're so busy getting in your own way, I'm going to do you a favor. When you get too far off, to the point where you're going to a dead end street, I'm going to hit you. And the reason why I'm going to hit you is because if I don't, you'll arrive at the dead end street and you can't turn around. There's no U-turn. It's the electric socket. You can't go back from the electric socket. So when you get a flat tire on the way to a big meeting and you end up missing the meeting, that's only because Hashem says, if I let you continue, you would have been part of that accident on the highway. If you would have made the meeting, you would have made the money, and then you would have used the money to do things, more things against me, like you've already done for the last 30 years. So I didn't want you to at least have that money. If you would have made the date, you would have married her, and she's not Jewish, and that would have ruined the rest of your life. If you would have made the zivug, you would have met him, but he's really a wife beater. And he just looks good. And it would have destroyed you. There's many, many things that happen to us and we think are bad. But in reality, if you believe in God of Israel, it's only good. Only good. He's doing you a favor, even though it looks horrible. You ask somebody, listen, why does he make people sick? The easiest answer, it's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all, but the easiest answer is because everybody becomes religious when they're sick. You go to the hospice center, as I learned from my dear friend Fidel, everybody believes in God. There are no atheists in the hospice center. There are no atheists on a deathbed. The biggest atheist will ask the smallest rabbi to give him a blessing. Sickness makes you realize that you're mortal. Makes you realize you're not God, like you've been pretending to be for the last 50 years. So he's doing you a favor. So Rabbi Akiva is telling us here, your choices, I know what you're going to do. Your freedom, I'm still going to give you, even though I know what you're going to do, I'm not going to get in your way. When you make the wrong choice, the world was judging goodness, I'll give you the option of doing tshuva. And everything depends on the abundance of good deeds, remember. I need the world to continue existing. You can't get to a point where it's the 50th level of tum'ah. You can't get to a point where it's unrecoverable because I promised my son Noah I'm not going to destroy the world. I promised my son Moshe Rabbeinu I'm not going to destroy the world. I promised my sons Avraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov I'm going to give their children the Torah and the Mashiach, Mashiach is going to save them. I made all these promises so don't ruin it for me. I can't let the world get to a point where it's unrecoverable. So when you get to a point where you're the one that's going to make that one extra sin that takes everyone off the map, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to do you a favor by stopping you, even if that means that I have to kill you. מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שערכו בפי עליון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בלשונות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל אשר יפנו, ישכילו ויצליחו, יזכו לעשות כאלה וכאלה, הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן.